Hello, and welcome back to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll be updating the firmware on our Raspberry Pi 5. This will help us get the most out of our hardware and ensure that we get the most value out of our Pi. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk, use caution and proceed responsibly. For this endeavor, we will have a few prerequisites. You will, of course, need a Raspberry Pi 5 and a power supply. The Pi 5 does require a power supply with 5 amps. You are able to use the older 3 amp power supply that is intended for the Pi 4, but I do recommend using the 5 amp version, as it was made for this model Pi, and if you use the 3 amp, you will be limited to base Pi functions. In addition to the Pi and its power supply, you also need to get a micro SD card. Because the firmware is so small, I'll be using a small 16 gig SD card. However, larger cards should also work fine. We'll also need access to a computer that has the ability to read and write to our micro SD card. In addition to the hardware that we require, we also have some software needs. These needs come to us in the form of the Raspberry Pi Imager. This is a free software tool that we'll use to place the Raspberry Pi firmware onto our micro SD card. To obtain said software, we must first go to the Raspberry Pi website, navigate, and find the download section that houses the Raspberry Pi Imager software. Once you're in the software download section, you'll not have to scroll far to find the needed software. Just scroll down a few inches and locate the download link. For this video, I'll be downloading the Windows version, as that is the operating system on the computer that I will be using to add our firmware to our micro SD card. After you've located your download link and your download is finished, start the installation process and let the software install itself. This shouldn't be very hard, as the installer is an auto-executable and the overall installation is automated. Once the installation is done, you can hit finish, and if you've got the option enabled, you can even launch the imager from here. Before we go too far, be sure to make sure you have an SD card in your PC, and remember that this will format your card, and if you have anything on it, that information will be lost. Also, I'm sorry this video quality sucked. However, I had some camera issues when making this video. Once the SD card is in place, move back to the imager, click on the select device option, and select the Raspberry Pi 5, as this is the device we'll be updating. Our next option is to select an OS, or operating system. This is a little misleading, as we're not picking an OS, but we will be navigating down to the utility section and selecting the option to boot from USB first. We'll be picking this option as I'd like my Pi to try and boot from the USB drive first, and if a USB drive is unavailable, then I want my Pi to boot from the SD card. Next, we'll simply select our external storage. As you can see, mine is the 16 gig card we just added. Once we select our card, we hit next, and we'll be given a warning about how this will wipe any data currently on the card off if we continue. Simply hit OK, and the process will start. The process of preparing the SD card took my computer less than a minute. This includes writing the data and verifying it afterward. I'll be speeding this part up to help save us all some time. Once the firmware software is done being written to the SD card, we'll get a pop-up message that tells us that our write was successful, and we can now remove the SD card from the reader. After the SD card is prepared, we'll need to remove the card from our PC and insert the SD card and needed cabling into the Pi 5 so we can proceed with the firmware update. Again, I do wish to apologize for the quality of the overhead video. The camera that I'm accustomed to is unavailable, and this camera didn't focus as well as it should have. With our SD card plugged in, I'll insert my power cable. Updating the firmware on the Pi 5 can be done headless. However, if you wish, you can also insert the HDMI cable in as well. However, there doesn't seem to be an advantage to doing so, as there isn't much helpful information displayed. Once you power up your Pi 5, you'll see a red LED, and when the Pi is booted, the red LED will turn green. This LED will stay solid green until the firmware is updated, and at that time the LED will go from a solid green light to a blinking green light. Once the LED is blinking, you know the firmware is written to your Pi, and you can now power the unit down. 
If this process is followed well, you'll have an updated Pi that has the ability to dual boot, using the USB drive first, and if it is not available, then the unit will look for an SD card to boot from. This process took about 15 minutes, it updated the base firmware, and this unit now boots in the order I wish it to. All in all, it is a very easy process. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, or hell, even if you didn't, please help support this small channel by giving this video a like, leaving me a note in the comments, or if you've not done so yet, please consider subscribing. These are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world. Thank you.